on. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Wade Fitzgerald, and I'm the Blanchard Carillon Fellow here at Bach Tower Gardens. And uh, I'm really glad you tuned in today. Um, thank you for uh, listening to my recital, and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, so, so we got a few questions, and a lot of people, Beth and Angela, wanted to know what are your future plans, and how long have you been at Bach? All right. Um, so future plans. Um, since I've been here, you know, this has really uh, inspired me to uh, look for a career in carillon playing. However, um, it is quite an uncommon instrument. And, um, you know, you could wait years for a position to open up. So uh, in the meantime, uh, I'm planning on studying landscape architecture. I'm going to go back to school and study landscape architecture. And um, but all the while I'll be you know looking for Carillon jobs and you know trying to keep up my practicing and working my way into uh, arranging and composing as well. So um, so yeah, those are my plans. A lot of studying in my future for sure. Um, and was how long? Uh, yeah, been? how long have you been at Block? Okay, uh, so this year uh, I actually have been here just before New Year's. I think I started December twenty eighth. 2020. But uh, I had also been here for uh, about the first half of 2020 as well. This is uh, my second time here at Bach. And I'm uh, you know, thrilled to be back. This is probably the best job in the world. Honestly, I love being here and playing this amazing instrument. This is arguably the finest carillon in the world and, you know, the finest setting for a carillon in the world. You know, these gardens, there's nothing else like it anywhere in the world. And um, so yeah, the, the better part of 2020 and then uh, this entire year so far, that's how long I've been here. And where are you from originally, Wade? Uh, so I was born and raised in Tampa. So not far from here at all. Okay. Florida boy. <laughs> and so you were staying at the Pinewood Estate Carriage House. So what was one of your most interesting nights there? <sighs> most interesting nights, hmm. Well, I guess it was pretty exciting. One time uh, I found a rat in the apartment. <laughs> that was fun. Um, yeah, you know, living in Florida, you know, anybody who lives in Florida is no stranger to critters getting in the house. I've had, I've seen rats in the apartment before. I've been able to get them out though. Um, seen the occasional spider or roach. Uh, that's always fun. But uh, other than that, you know, nothing too exciting. Uh, the most exciting thing for me happened when I walk around the gardens at night, you know, I see all kinds of wildlife. I've seen armadillos just about every night. I see rabbits. I see lots of great horned owls. I've even seen a couple bobcats. Um, what other carillons have you played on, Wade? Um, I've played about a dozen around the country. Um, let's see. Uh, I had played every carillon in Florida, all three of them, until they added a fourth one in Venice. So uh, I'm going to have to get down there and play that one one of these days. So um, I learned on the uh, Century Tower carillon at University of Florida. Go Gators. And um, let's see, I've played a couple in South Carolina, uh, for example, at Clemson University. They have a really nice carillon. I've played a couple in Alabama in the Birmingham area. Um, played a couple in Illinois, um, two in Pennsylvania, and uh, I'm trying to remember if there are any others. But if I'm forgetting any, it adds up to about a dozen. Um, and then how long and how difficult was it to transform ACDC into Carillon music? That was amazing. Oh, thank you. Uh, you know, actually it was in kind of a key that worked really well on the bells. And since, you know, I, you know, knew and liked that song for such a long time, I think that one actually came more naturally to me than some of the other arrangements I've done. I can't remember now because I wrote it a couple of years ago, but I think I was able to iron that out in a few days, no more than a week maybe. But um, it is quite difficult to play. Uh, I wrote it to be kind of just almost obnoxiously virtuosic and show offy on purpose, you know, in the spirit of rock and roll. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's quite difficult, but, you know, because I've played it so much, I'm 
it's doable for me now. Although I wrote it on, uh, I you know wrote it on a lighter carillon than this one. So the first time I played it here, it was it was very hard to play because it's such a heavier instrument. But uh, I think I've built up a little muscle since then, so it's manageable. How big is the biggest bell painting? Good question. The biggest bell is uh, more than 11 tons. And um, it's, you know, I, I haven't measured it exactly, but it's definitely wider than my whole wingspan and uh, taller too. It's, it's a massive bell and I've actually stood under it uh, with my fingers all the way in my ears as it run, uh, rang the hour one time. And um, I could still hear it clear as day. And I actually felt it in my chest. Very uh, intense experience. And do they ever need tuning? They do need tuning um, about every, I've heard, two to 300 years. So I'll be long gone before that's an issue, luckily. And how do they find people to keep the instrument in top shape? And are they local or do they travel? Yeah, so um, most of the maintenance is done uh, locally. We have um, several tower curators who do, you know, all kinds of routine maintenance, you know, maybe replacing rusty nuts and bolts or if a cable breaks, they're able to replace those. And, uh, you know, little maintenance on the clappers and springs and stuff like that. More technical repairs and, uh, and just more technical work is usually left to Carillon technicians. And I think uh, historically that's been done by um, people from the Taylor Bell Foundry in England. Uh, that's the foundry that made these bells on the keyboard. Um, so I think the more, yeah, the more technical maintenance and replacement of parts is done by them, but day-to-day uh, -day maintenance is done by people who work here at the gardens. Okay, and with Caroline's being so rare, how do you practice? Uh, so typically uh, during the day, uh, I would practice on the uh, practice console, which uh, is an exact replica of this, same dimensions and everything. Uh, the only difference is instead of being uh, hooked up to big bronze bells, it has little tone bars, you know, like the things you see on a xylophone. So, uh, so I'm able to play that, but it makes a quiet sound. So I can play as many wrong notes as I like without, you know, bothering anybody downstairs. However, uh, the problem with that is that it doesn't really feel or sound the same as the real instrument. So to really, to really uh, iron out the musical aspects of the piece, I would want to bring it up here on the real instrument and you know work through it a lot before I actually perform it in a concert. So uh, luckily, uh, I'm allowed to play on the instrument uh, in the evening after the gardens are closed. And uh, I've been told I'm allowed to play till uh, midnight. I, you know, normally I don't try to play that late because there are people who live in neighborhoods nearby. But uh, apparently they really like hearing the bells in the evening. And um, so I try and get up here maybe at least an hour or two every evening and just practice. Maybe we can talk here into coming and playing some evenings. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you also mentioned about how you like to take walks around the natural areas and the preserve. Um, and you've seen quite a few snakes on those endeavors. Yeah. Um, so what's the biggest or coolest wildlife or snake that you've seen um, doing that? Um, so biggest, um, well, there's a type of snake that lives out here called a coach whip, and they're really beautiful. Their, their heads are like dark brown to black, but then they're really unusual in color because they fade from that color to very pale sort of cream tan color towards the tail. And uh, there aren't really any other snakes that have that sort of pattern. And there's dark lines in between the scales. So they get their name because they actually kind of look like a bull whip, like a braided whip. And they're enormous. I just a couple weeks ago, I was walking on one of the trails and I saw one that must have been at least six feet long. And it was probably about as big around as, you know, my wrist huge snake. And uh, that was cool enough. But as I looked closer, I realized it wasn't taken off like they normally do. And that's because it had a corn snake wrapped around its neck. They were fighting. And what I assumed happened was that, uh, you know, the coach whip, they'll eat anything, including other snakes. I'm assuming that the coach whip was trying to eat the corn snake. And uh, the corn snake had other plans and fought back. Mm -hmm. So that was probably the most uh, exciting wildlife moment I've 
seen here at the gardens. And what's your fondest Bach Tower Gardens memory since you've been here with us? Ooh, there's so many, it's hard to pick from. Um, you know, I guess really just every day is kind of special and each has its own sort of surprises and rewards. Uh, there are, you know, so many recitals I've enjoyed giving and, you know, wildlife I've seen, people I've met, it's really hard to pick just one, you know, so I'll just say the whole experience. Awesome. Anything else you want to share with everybody, Wade? Um, don't think so. Thank you all very much for uh, coming here to hear me play, and I uh, hope I've been able to answer your questions. Right. Thank you very much.